but broke the record and became the fastest selling non fiction book. Prince Harry's tell all mem memoir, Spare. Uh, but as thousands of pundits spent their weekends diving in, one thing became clear to most. At what cost? Salacious and personal details of senior royals. Minor squabbles between siblings plus military and security secrets all have been revealed. And yet the threats keep coming. Harry has now told London's Daily Telegraph that he had enough material to write two books. But, quote... There are some things that have happened, especially between me and my brother and, to some extent, between me and my father that I just don't want the world to know because I don't think they would ever forgive me. Joining me now for the latest fallout on these threats and more secrets is the Royal Editor at London's Daily Mail, Russell Myers. Russell, thanks so much and welcome. I mean, what do you make of all of this? It's certainly... Sounds like a threat from Harry. Well, good evening, Gary. Well, uh, it does sound like a threat, doesn't it? And uh, some people have been saying it's tantamount to blackmail. I mean, the fact that we've just had 400 odd pages of this memoir from Prince Harry, the explosive nature of the allegations and accusations that he's been firing off at all members of his family, indeed the King, his brother, Prince William, even his stepmother, Camilla, comes in for a bit of a bruising, uh, talking about uh, allegations of assault from his brother. I mean, really, really damaging claims uh, in this book. Uh, and yet here we are talking just a few days after its release that uh, that there could be another one in the offering. And I'm sure that is a completely un unwelcome news to, uh, to any of the royal family that have uh, had uh, involvement in this book. Yeah, I, I could keep calling the book yeah, Spare I Me. I, I just can't finish it on one word. But look, Russell, I mean, what other kinds of details could Harry actually include in this book? I mean, where could he go? What could he do? Well, that's a big question, isn't it? I mean, uh, if I had a pound or a dollar for every time uh, somebody said to me, how much more is there to say? I, I probably wouldn't be sitting here now because uh, so many people have said, <laughs> what on earth is left to say? I mean, we had the Oprah Winfrey interview, then a couple of uh, interviews with US broadcasters, then the Netflix series, now this book. Um, if there is another book in the offering, I mean, he has been paid an awful lot of money, around about $20, 30000000 million for a three-book deal. What on earth did he leave out? Harry said himself that the manuscript was uh, was twice as long, over 800 pages needed to be cut down. And uh, it, this veiled threat that he's, been, uh, delivered, that he's delivered to the royal family is quite concerning indeed, because, as I said, nobody comes off lightly. Everybody comes in for a bit of a bruising. So uh, it, what, what on earth is left to say? It's, um, it, it's quite worrying, I think. Look, I, I've been in government, I, I know stuff. I've been in Buckingham Palace, I know stuff. There's secret passages and stuff. I'm not about to write a book, but I'm amazed he could even be thinking about writing this book. I mean, Russell, the ramifications of this one are still ongoing. Security experts, they've stepped in and they've said spares descriptions of the layout of royals' homes, for instance, could compromise security. Well, indeed, and that, and that rings true. All of the people I've spoken to, former protection officers who, who looked after the royal family, have, have been in absolute despair. I mean, the revelation that Prince Harry, uh, by his own admission, killed 25 Taliban insurgents is, is very, very worrying indeed. I mean, huge, huge operation to keep the royal family and the people on the periphery uh, safe every year, costs an awful lot of money for taxpayers. And here is Harry using it to, uh, to further sales in his book. I mean, I, again, don't think anyone would he was proofreading it because I don't think that would have reached uh, reached publication. But a uh, huge, huge concerns for for the roles over these revelations. And um, it, again, it's just uh, just Harry uh, giving one side of the story, which is which we we've come to expect from him, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, there's planning for the coronation. King Charles' coronation is now at full speed, what, 15 weeks away. The latest rumour is there's going to be a royal summit between Harry, the Prince of Wales, and the King to thrash out their differences before the coronation. Do you think that's likely? Well, it's certainly rumoured. Again, uh, I think... The king is leading from the top here, and he's uh, spoken about unity, togetherness, and indeed we, we saw uh, a little bit of that in his first Christmas message. And uh, the people I've spoken to within the palace have said 
that he loves he loves both his sons. Of course, this is a terrible situation that's uh, occurred, but I think there is some form of sympathy for Harry for what he has gone through. He's talking about a mental health journey that he's still going through. Uh, and I think yeah, they do kind of need to keep him close because um, if there is another book in the offering, and this sort of uh, accusations could even spiral out of control, then they're better to keep him close than uh, to leave him on the outside, perhaps. Yeah, to cuddle him into the firm again, uh, but it might look like he's had a win. That, that seems to be some people's views. Well, listen, I'm sure there's an awful lot of people who say uh, Harry should just be left out in the cold of the Californian sunshine and perhaps that's the best place for him. But uh, I, I'm sure when there's money on yeah. the table, Harry and Meghan have got a lot to say. Yeah, well, doesn't that, doesn't that sum